step at the foul line. He's going to let it fly. Ten feet away. Step, only 6-3, jumps center for the Hornets, but plays guard in the game. Plays all 32 minutes and shoots and shoots and shoots. Gets it for Step. Step turn around, five footer. It's good. Well, putting the, putting the ball in the hole, I guess, is the name of the game. You know, that's what everybody likes to see. Step is a fine ball handler who can bedazzle his frustrated opponents with driving layups. But he really likes to pop from outside. And he does all this with at least two, frequently three men, sticking to him like flypaper. He's got a speed guard by three men. Pass back to him. He lays up. I don't think I've reached near my potential. And no, I think I'm going to be a lot better. I've got, got a lot of things I have to work on. Uh, mainly right now, I want to work on my quickness, son. And I want to work on my defense. He almost has a on by Keith. Stepp's defensive play ranges from earnest to haphazard. But as one college coach said, you can teach defense. You can't teach a kid to shoot 65% from 20 feet. Choosing the right college to showcase his talent is very much on Stepp's mind these days. He hasn't made a decision yet, but he knows what he's looking for. Naturally, I want to go to you know, a good academic school, but I'd say I'll pick it more for the, more for the basketball program. Uh, I don't think I'll be happy uh, going to a school and uh, just sitting on the bench. You know, I, I'm not expecting that. You couldn't expect to go to a real large school and play right off. Nobody could do that, but you know, I just want the chance. That's the main thing with me. Tell me what it was like to grow up in Martin County to be around basketball there, which has always been a basketball hotbed from the you know, four, 30s, 40s, 50s, and, and into the 60s? Well, for me, it was just, you know, I, I was basically born playing ball and le learning about basketball. I had, obviously, siblings. Had an uncle that played at, played at Marshall. I all started from my dad. So it was always just something, you know, I, I just grew up doing. Uh, you know, it's just something we started doing at a real early age and something we wanted to do, obviously. And you being, you being the third of the fourth sons, yes. you had, you know, Joe and Jim, and they were certainly guiding you and showing you, but, um, but your, your uncle was also, I think, All-State, went to Marshall, is that right? Yeah, my uncle Orville played at, Mar played at Marshall. He was also a state's leading scorer as Joe and as Jim. So uh, uh, Orville and I actually had some basketball camps. Um, we became pretty close uh, back when I, I guess I was around 30 and we had camps outside camps at his home uh, in the summers and and we've become pretty close since then or we're still still living still doing well your dad was a welder dad was a welder and I've always said that I may have I may have gotten the mr. basketball award but my dad was the mr. basketball of my family there's no question he just didn't he just didn't receive the award uh, he uh, he, uh, you know, he's, he's been gone since 90, 99, and uh, he uh, was a welder, and Dad had a pretty simple philosophy. Uh, he kind of likened it to someone that was shooting a rifle. You know, Dad was a welder, and he knew a regulation rim was 18 inches. And he knew this in the 60s because he worked with Orville, his younger brother, who we referred to a while ago. He knew a regulation rim was 18 inches in diameter. He knew a basketball, a men's basketball, was nine inches in diameter. Uh, even though it doesn't look like it, you can obviously stand up on a ladder, hold two basketballs, and they'll fit perfectly inside a rim. So a lot more room than you think there are. Dad thought, well, you know, a rifle, if you're shooting a rifle from 100 yards, and you can perfect a small target, you put a bigger target up, it's going to be pretty easy. So he welded these rims down almost like carnival rims. But he, he did it to a 16 inch. Back when I played, everybody in the area was doing it in their driveway like we did, because it was a story. It was an ongoing story for years. And he go, we had a 16 inch rim and a 13 inch rim. I wouldn't recommend anybody use the 13. We got pretty good at it, but 15, 16, you'll get frustrated, especially in the beginning. But it, uh, I would have sworn between my seventh and eighth grade year which is when I really, all I saw was about a 15 inch rim for three months. Had a very long summer. Went back to eighth grade. In the gymnasium, first day of school, I looked at the principal 
and I and I, I would have bet. I said, those aren't the same rims. Those are huge. Those are not the rims that were here when I left. He said, Irv, those are the same rims. They looked gigantic. They just looked huge. I hadn't seen one in three months. And it just looked like they were just, just big rims. And you didn't have AU and all that going on. So we worked out on our, on our dirt court with our water hose to spray the dust down. And... Uh, on that, on that small rim. So your dad gets a lot of the credit for making the the, the, the first three brothers such prolific scores because you had to practice. And his, and, and, and his brother. Yeah. And his brother who was a 30 point scorer or who went to Marshall. He was doing that, dad was doing that in the 60s. And uh, I mean, it, it just common sense. If you remember later on, somebody came up with, I don't even know if you remember this, it lasted a couple of years. I don't upset my dad, this big ball theory thing. You know, they came up with this big ball and said, you shoot the big ball at the rim, get, get the regulation ball, it's easier. Dad said, no, no, it's not the same feel, it's not the same touch. But somebody actually did that. I don't know if you ever remember that. I do. And it, it lasts a couple of years. Yeah. And Dad said, that's not, no, you're, you're, you're not even touching the same thing. It's, it's not the same. And, uh, but it, it didn't last. But, but I would recommend anybody uh, in your backyard, cut your rim down to about 16. Uh, won't hurt you a bit. Make you a better shooter, guarantee it. You know, Joe goes to Ohio State, <clears throat> then comes to Moorhead, then Jimmy goes to George Washington, That's then right. goes to EKU. And so you were kind of left alone there for a moment while they went off to do their thing. What was it like being at Warfield or Sheldon Clark? Because that area, though, I mean, they had won in 41, they won in 54, they, they had won titles. But then the stepbrothers come along and just score at will. And it kind of set the stage for you yeah. to do what you did later on. I mean, you know, when I look back at it, it's just surreal now. I mean, it, it, it just happened. I mean, it, I didn't think about it. I was grounded, thank, uh, you know, because of my dad, my brothers. I didn't, you know, I'd, I'd have a game and it was time for the next game. You know, they, they, they dare let me even think about the game we just had. And I, you know, it was just another game. I, I really, it all didn't really come to me what was going on, especially in my high school career with all the points. Until I just sit and think about it now, so, you know. It, and now it seems kind of crazy. But it, it just seemed like the natural thing at that time. And, you know, it's just something that we, we lived it. We, uh, I would be playing right now if I still could. I played up until I was about 52 in leagues with 20 year olds. And I just can't do it anymore. Uh, but I mean, there's, a, I think there's a you know there's a passion that not everybody has it, and that's just something that, that we had, and and uh, and and we still do. I mean, I, I love the game. It's, it's been great to us and to my family. You moved to Phelps. I did. And you bring basketball to a <clears throat> excuse me. You bring basketball to a small community that had not been known for anything. It had been Pikeville. Right. It had always been Pikeville in Pike County, and, and maybe a, maybe Dorton had a cup of coffee and, and other schools. Right. The attention you got when you moved to that little trailer next to the next to the gym. Right behind the gym. What was that? What did that do to the community and the family? It, and it was the ambiance uh, and everything. It, it was once again so surreal, man. It, to to be in that situation, I've often wondered what if internet was around then, because. I mean, you know, CBS came to Phelps. I mean, hung out for about a week. It was just crazy. Every gym, every game was packed to the rafters. Uh, I remember my first game, I had 50. Uh, my first game there my junior year. And it just kept happening. And I was a good percentage shooter. And a lot, well, a lot of people don't realize, and I tell, I tell people this, people would say, well, I bet you shot 50 field goals a game, every game, didn't you? I said, no, no, my senior year, when I averaged the 54, I shot 32 shots a game. But I averaged hitting 20 of them, that's 40 points. And I averaged 16 free throws a game, and I hit 14. So those are your 54. So, that, you know, it, it, that's kind of how I did what I did. But I, I actually, you know, you hear about kids growing up and they say they lived in the gym. I did live in the gym, literally. Before that trailer you referred to was behind the gym, the dressing room was where I slept. The concession stand was my kitchen. And I woke up two or three in the morning. I didn't feel like I wanted to sleep. Play ball in the gym. So I literally did, lived in the gymnasium for about three months. 
your junior year, you scored 1,200 some odd points. And when did the attention start to hit you and the school, you think, when Joe and Jim did what they did and they scored 34, 36 points right. a game? But who's this other brother that's now pumping in 46? Probably, probably around half of the season into my junior year. That's when I started getting a lot of attention, you know, back then, and, and it just it just kept escalating. And I didn't deal a whole lot with it. You know, I was kind of a backward kid. Uh, uh, you probably wouldn't know it now, but I was. I was, I was shy and uh, really didn't like all the attention. I just wanted to fit in with everybody else. I didn't want anybody to think I thought I was better than them, which obviously I wasn't. I just played basketball. And uh, probably about mid-season junior year, that's when, you know, the, the points, and, and then you start getting the attention, and back then it was always the Louisville paper, the Lexington paper. I'm sure a lot of the articles I never saw. Uh, you know, my, my mom and dad kept that stuff. I, I didn't, that was for them to look at, not for me to look at, and that was kind of embedded in me too, and that was all part of the, you know, the process of being grounded and keeping my head and, and being consistent with what I was able to do. What were the crowds like when you would show up to, let's say, Feds Creek plays, take your pick, Mullins, and nobody's there. But if you show up, now it's packed house. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, every, every gym I ever played him was like that. Um, uh, I, I can't recall ever being in a gym that wasn't like that. Not not my junior and senior year. I mean, both those years, it was just, it was insane. How crowded. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of fond memories, man. A lot, a lot of a lot of fun. A lot of a lot of great people. The Phelps community in that area, they took me in like I was one of their own. I mean, I just lived there two years, but to me, that's like home to me still, to this day. And I I, I travel with my job in that area quite a bit, so uh, I've got a lot of friends there still. Sixty minutes doesn't show up to just anybody, and they showed up to Phelps, Kentucky. I've got the I've got a lot of the video upstairs on it. Do you have that much attention for someone who is shy and backwards, as you said at that time? I, I, I learned I had to learn to be different. But <laughs> <laughs> to have, I don't know if it was Charles Corral, who I can't remember who it was. I tell you exactly who it was. We pulled we pulled the tape out last night. My wife did. I hadn't seen it in 15 years. Charles Corral show Sunday morning with Charles Corral and. At that time, I'm sure you've heard of this name, the guy that did the sports show, big sportsman back then, Ray Gandalf. And uh, he, he, he did it. And the first time I actually saw it, that was you know my senior year, I was 18 when they came. I'd already graduated college. My brother, Jim, who was going to George Washington University, he happened to catch it. They did a clip of it on something. He was in his dorm room in Washington actually went at that time. I saw it at 23, a guy from Phelps had VHS taped it, went to a Sheldon Clark game where I was living at the time in Inez, thought I might be there, brought the tape and gave it to me. A guy named Jack Fannin, he used to do all of our videos of her games. And he videoed that CBS, uh, that CBS clip, that was about 10 minutes long. And uh, that's the first time I saw it, it's pretty, pretty cool. And uh, you can still make it out. It's pretty rough what I've got. I may talk to you about the copy you've got, but uh, but yeah, that was it was amazing. They hung out for about a week, walking my classroom, CBS cameras. And here I'm here I am in English class, you know, and, I, and just <laughs> I just want to be like everybody else. And, it, and, it, and I still have issues with that to this day. I, you know, I just I'm, I am just like everybody else. I'm no different. But it was, it was, it was rough there at, at times. But uh, oh, they they followed me around for about a week. Followed me to the grocery store. Follow me to pick my mail up. I mean, it, it, it was pretty wild. You mentioned it was rough at times. The defenses you had to face, you were double, triple teamed, uh, I'm sure, years before Richie Farmer ever thought yep. about being double and triple teamed. But what was the officiating like? Did, do you think sometimes guys were out to get you a little bit? They were absolutely out to get me, uh, uh, several teams. I don't want to name any schools, but, but there's a couple in particular. I mean, they're, they're, they would put in players, and their objective was – to get me thrown out, in case the ref not looking and you know sucker punch me or whatever. That's ha that happened on a couple occasions. One game in particular, a guy comes in and and he I don't know if he had a ring on. I don't know what about eight stitches right here. And I remember 
I ended up going to the foul line, taped it up, and uh, uh, he got thrown out of the game, of course. The guy hadn't even been in the game. He came in for that reason. And we ended up winning the game by two points. After the game, I went to the local dock. He stitched me up. But <laughs> Favorite gym you got to play in that wasn't at Phelps, where you're like, hey, you know, Man, pitchers, batters love certain pitchers and quarterbacks love certain receivers and whatnot. But if you had a rim, a, a, a gymnasium that was your go-to on the road, where was it? That's a tough one. I mean, that's a tough one. I, maybe Millard High School. And the reason I say that, I had a lot of really good games, but my best game probably ever may have been my junior year at Millard, six inches of snow on the ground. I had 68. I know my, from the field I was, I used to know all this stuff because my brother Gary kept up with all this stuff. I know I had to dunk that game. I had, I think, 18 rebounds. I think I was 28 for 34 from the field. I missed like six field goals. I think I hit my first 13 straight. And they were, you know, they were deep. I didn't get a three. I didn't get a three for them, but they were deep. And uh, that was probably to the point where when we played them the next year, I didn't know if they were joking or if they were serious. But before the game, they gave me an award. As I still have it, Urban Step, Miller Mustang, number one opponent. <laughs> and I didn't know if they were trying to get into my psyche. Maybe before that game, I think I had 58 that game, and we won that one. But yeah, that that's probably that may have been the the gym I would remember the most, but kind of because of, but just because of what I just told you. That's interesting. <laughs> wow. I never thanks, had a team do that before. Thanks for beating our tail. Yeah, just a regulation <laughs> game, you know. I thought, man, that somebody's just messing with me, but but they spell my name like Irvin Johnson, E A R V I N. My wife says Irvin, but that's how he spelled his name, and I've still got the trophy. I mean, it, <laughs> true story though. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I think, if memory serves, senior year, your lowest may have been 34, I think, either at Feds Creek or Ashland. Um, and to be held to a 34-point performance, that's that, an off night. That was my low game. And I think I, I think it may have been Belfort, but I'm not sure. It wasn't Ashland. I had 50 in the AIT. Oh, that's right. You had 50 of the 73 of that game. Yeah, yeah. in the AIT that year. I, I'm pretty sure it was Belfry at Belfry. Uh, and it was my, because my junior year, my low was 19. And then my senior, I think, was 34. When you score those points, and at that time, people start saying, he's the biggest scorer since King Kelly Coleman. To be in that same breath, with someone from the same region. Yes. What's that mean? I'd always heard about King Kelly Coleman. I always, you know, the comparisons. Saw pictures of him when he was younger. Remember my dad talking about going to Washington play and driving to a game one night to Wayland. And the guy on the radio said, if you're coming to see the King play, turn around. The fire marshal's not letting nobody else in. So I knew who Kelly Coleman was. And uh, in Kelly's later years, got to meet him became friends with him. When he, you know, he was diagnosed with cancer, he moved back home, it was a pallbearer at his funeral. So uh, that, to me, that's, that's about the best compliment you could give anyone. Or, or any, any kind of, put me in any kind of sentence with Kelly Coleman. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just grateful. Um, Kelly was one of a kind, he really was. We've had some, we had got to have some really good conversations about when he was being recruited, when I was being recruited. I used to go visit him. Uh, the last year of his life, and uh, that—that's that, to me that was just the ultimate compliment. Just any kind of comparison to him. You scored 3,228, I think, total, with no three-point line. Had there been a three-point line? We used to talk about that, and we figured out. I, you know, I did, and these—I I guess the, the smart ones figured it out. But the way it was, without me being conscious of a three. They said I would have hit six or seven threes a game, as was. Obviously, if I was conscious of a three, which I got to play in leagues like that after the fact, and uh, played some semi-pro ball for Rick Huckabee. He just warned me for the three. I was 30, 
four. My nickname was Old Man because I was playing with 20-year-olds trying to make the NBA. And all I did was shoot. It was, I got to play with the three. Had one game, I hit 15. Had a 13. I, have to, I hit double figure threes almost every time I played. That was one of the best years of my life. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. The atmospheres around, as I mentioned, when you showed up, they were packed. Uh, but you didn't get to a state tournament. No. And obviously, uh, at, at that time, gosh, Betsy Lane, I think, may have had. The best opportunity I had was probably my junior year at Phelps, but even more so my sophomore year at Sheldon Clark. We were supposed to go to the state tournament. We were, we, I was playing with older brother Jim, who was a senior. We won our first 13 games. We were 25-3, and three, got upset in the region. And we were ranked eighth in the state when we got upset. Our first loss that year was to Shelby County. Charles Hurt, Norris, Norris Buckley, they won the state tournament that year. That's, that was the best opportunity I had. When I went to Phelps my junior year, we had a kid, named, he was, his last name was Staggs, and he was also a junior, about 6'5". He transferred. Made all mention all state on that team with me. We had a good shot that next year. He lived with his grandma. She had gotten really sick. They moved closer to a hospital. And the senior year, he was over in Pikeville. And we played those guys twice and beat them twice. I wish he'd been on our team. Because we, that would, we would have had a really good chance if he could have stayed that last year. Is that in relation to Robert Staggs, I guess? The, the Probably player? is. Yeah, uh, I, yeah he had, he, there's, there was several on that family that were good athletes, football and basketball. Did it ever eat at you that you didn't get to a state uh, to sure. show off what you could do outside of It did. It sure did. I mean, I, I played against a lot of guys that obviously went to the state tournament. And, when we played Ashland in the AIT, I think they were, they might have even won it that year, my senior year. I can't remember. I know they they went and were probably the final four. 1980, Owensboro. Yeah, I know they went because they had Jeff Tipton and they had, they had some good players, and uh, so we played some good quality teams. But it, yeah, it bothered me. Not not me personally, I guess, just because if all you know, you'd hear the hype about well, he, who did he play against, that kind of stuff, uh, but. Uh, you know, it just it just wasn't in the cards. I mean, I had a couple of chances. The sophomore year especially should have went, but it just didn't happen. To be named Mr. Basketball, uh, obviously you had more media hype around you than maybe, you know, King Kelly obviously had it because he got to the state tournament. But for a guy who never got to the state tournament, yep. you may have had more media hype than Richie and Elijah Justice and King Kelly and those guys that did go. What did that do for your hype, you think, uh, to win that award? You mean what did it do for? What did the media attention, do you think that helped along the way? Because people in Lexington, Louisville, Bowling Green never saw you. It, 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 I've always said this to kids back home. In Eastern Kentucky, you, you typically, to get the recognition in this, in this area, and it's probably still the same way, you have to do one of two things. You have to go to state tournament. You better have some ridiculous numbers. I had some ridiculous numbers. And that's, that's how I obviously got the attention. Um, all that stuff was kept so far away from me. I mean, I was so grounded on just playing. I mean, I didn't look at the papers. I was, you know, I just didn't. I just played. I didn't even think about the Mr. Basketball, really, until it happened. I mean, I just didn't. I, I call it dumb, naive, whatever. I was just playing ball. and. You know, whatever happened, happened. If social media had been around, then it had been nuts. But, you know, I've, I've often wondered about that at that time. But, uh, uh, you know, it's something that, that uh, you know, I, I appreciate it more now than I ever did, probably. Uh, which, you know, there were other people at that time that were obviously could have gotten it. I think Dicky Bill came out that year. Uh, uh, he was probably, I think, second in balloting on that one. Played for Holmes. Uh, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm right on that one, but um, it was, uh, you know, it, it, when I think back of it, it just, you know, it's just amazing when I think back. But at that time, what kept me so grounded, I didn't, th I didn't think about the acc accolades or awards or any of that stuff. I just didn't think about it. And, and one of the last things, your impact on the game for that era, and when people open up that record book and they're like, who's this guy? Hmm. Who's this? You know, because obviously younger people don't know who set the stage for them in a lot of ways. But to be in that fraternity of Mr. Basketball, 
to have 3,000 points, to see Clark score 3,000 right. points, to see your family do what they've done. You and your family have left a pretty large impact on that area of the state. Would, would you agree? I agree. And once again, I, I, I would not even talk to you without referring to my dad again. And also my mom, who I lost a couple of years ago. I mean, if there, she was a Miss Basketball. She put up with all of us. I can remember sitting at the dinner table many a time, two on two games, me and Joe against Dad and Jim. And on that dirt court, I, was, I can remember coming into dinner. We're not even speaking, we're aggravated. Joe and I are saying we won more, they're saying they won more. It's still a debate for the ones living. And I, I remember one time, and my mom was soft-spoken. I remember one time she made, she looked at us, we were all trying to eat dinner, and she said, I wish y'all just quit playing sometimes. And, uh, but she, 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 uh, she was always there for us. She probably knew more about basketball. Her name was Irma. Dad's name was Joe, of course. Probably knew about, more about basketball than any woman I ever met. In fact, when it was college tournament time, she, she felt everybody's ballots. She, and she, she always won them, you know, she always won them. She just did it for fun, you know, very religious lady. And, uh, but without mentioning those two, man, uh, uh, if, if there's anything ever good said about me, it's because of my mom and dad, no question. And last thing, the, the basketball religion that this state still has, but used to have in a much deeper affection, especially in places when you know, no internet. You had to listen to games on the radio. Right. You got turned away from the small gym. Right. Um, what was it to be a part of that? And what was it like to live in an era when football was secondary, baseball was secondary, it was basketball, and right. you were on top of the world of that? Loved it. Miss it. I, I, you know, a lot of times I wish kids could, today, could, could at least have that part of that era relived in, the, in their lives. So much different. You know, no four-wheelers to jump on, no cell phones, you know. It, uh, you know, you just, you basically just ate, slept, and, and dreamed it. That's just what, that's just what you did. Uh, uh, wouldn't, trade, wouldn't trade that life for nothing. Like, I'd like to see it back uh, for some of the young kids, but uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was just amazing, remarkable. I, I'm, I'm fortunate and blessed to be a part of that, of that era.